It is my absolute pleasure to be here with you tonight. I love spending time with young people, and I hope that I can be a source of encouragement for you this evening. We are gathered here this evening to honor some of the Valley's finest young people. It is surely no surprise to see so many proud parents, teachers, and counselors with us here today. Therefore, students, you should be very proud of them too, and I know you are. When I, when I grew up, I was told to respect my elders. What does that mean for you to respect your elders? It means appreciating the love, patience, and time they have given you freely during your studies. It means being grateful and using their sacrifices as the motivation you need to reach your goals. And you should all be proud of your school too. This is not your average school. This is an exceptional community within our community right here in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. So please join me once again in a show of respect for your parents, family members, teachers, coaches, counselors, librarians, principals, nurses, administrative staff, and others gathered here today for their support and for being, believing in all of you. Once again, let's give them all a big round of applause. You know, I'm glad that schools like this exist in our great state and our great country. They promote balance and creativity to produce results. These are the results right here tonight. You are the results. Your stories are their badge of honor. Schools like this exist because sometimes we need to be imaginative to our approach to challenges. I know each of you has struggled at some point in your academic life. I remember that far back. Difficulties are a part of school because they are a part of life. You've made it through school and I know you will make it through life as well. This is your big start. But in order to do so, in order to succeed, you will need to continue your education. And why not? You have shown that you are good at school, so keep going, don't stop now. Make a promise to yourselves to attend college, get an apprenticeship, or seek vocational training. Students, I want, you, I want to share a little story about a young lady who had every reason to give up on her future, but instead she chose otherwise. And I met this lady many years ago. I met her when I was a county commissioner way back in the late 1970s. She was a young lady that had come to Texas from Mexico and had gained her citizenship along with her husband and four children. Shortly after, the husband decided to leave the family, just left them there. The young lady was telling me the story at the time that she didn't know what to do. I met her years later, and she, can, she told me the story once again to remind me who she was. She reminded me that she had been abandoned by her husband and her children. After the first six weeks of school, they came home the two boys and two girls, and they had straight F's. They had failed every course. The kids were lost. And she said, Eduardo, she said, Eduardo, I cried and cried and cried and cried until I had no more tears. And then I think God spoke to me I gathered my children and I told my children that I would be going to adult education and that I would learn the English language so I could help my children achieve success in their school. 
and their schooling. And she graduated with a GED. And said, Eduardo, I, I wanted to do more for my children. I got them to study, they started doing well. So I went to junior college in Brownsville, Texas, at Texas Southmost College, and she got a two-year degree. She didn't stop. She said, I wanted to do a little bit more, so I went to Pan American University back then, and she got her four-year degree in education. Wow. Uh, I didn't want to stop there, so I got my master's degree. And she got a letter from the University of Tech, uh, Houston that offered her a scholarship to do a fellowship and go after her doctor's degree at the University of Houston. And she got her doctor's degree. A young lady, a young lady who didn't know how to speak English. And by the way, her children, they all became professionals. A doctor, a lawyer, a CPA, and a dentist. Now, what a, a story about a young lady who was abandoned with four children. So when we talk about having challenges in, the, in our lives, remember this name, Dr. Lupita Quintanilla, my very dear friend who is now at the University of Houston, who calls me once in a while to check on the all the boys and girls, all, as we still call them, all our students from the Valley that attend the Houston campus. Students, I firmly believe that there is no reason that you cannot one day turn to yourself into a leader like Lupita Quintanilla, as a parent, as a community leader, and in whatever you choose to be in life. But what does it mean to be a leader? What, what does leadership mean to you? To me, leadership is not the ability to tell people what to do. That's not leadership. Leadership is the ability to make people want to do the right thing through example. How you live your life. And it is also by example that we lead our families, and those around us in our community. Students, you all already begun to shine as these type of examples. You have succeeded. You are an example to your younger siblings, to the children on your block where you live. They will look to you and realize that they too can succeed in school. You have given them a valuable gift. But now, now, from this moment on, it is time to keep giving. Now is the time to shine as an even greater example by furthering your education. When I first ran for office back in 1970, 1970 and I was sworn in in 71, there was no University of Texas at Brownsville, no University of Texas at Pan American, there was no regional academic health center, medical school in the Valley. There was no school of research in Edinburgh. There was not a, a superhighway, there was not an expressway here in the Valley back in those days. There wasn't a South Texas college right down the street here so many people have worked so hard over the years. They're in this front row right here, along with your parents, to bring education to South Texas. And we're still working hard today. But you are the recipients of this legacy, each and every one of you. UTPA, UT Brownsville, Texas Southmost, South Texas College, the RAC, Regional Academic Health Center, TSTC, and a &M Kingsville right up the road here in Kingsville. These places were fought for you with you in mind. They are the gift of one generation to another, but it is up to you to grasp the opportunities that have been created.
Thomas, Ener Thomas Edison once said, and I quote him, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like hard work. I hope that speaks to, to you. I really do, and I think it does. College is a tremendous opportunity, but that opportunity comes to you dressed in overalls and looks like hard work. Personally, I learned the value of education from my parents. Growing up in a family of 10 children, we all had to work together to help each other. My mother taught us what it meant to be useful citizens who looked out for one another. My dad preached Americanism and patriotism every day of his life because he was a disabled American veteran, a veteran of foreign wars. I learned how to iron my clothes, wash my dishes at a time when it wasn't very manly or glamorous for a young man to do that. But when I got to college, I knew how to look after myself while everybody else was struggling. I was pressed and I was clean. Again, my dad did so much for all of us. He attended two years of community college and then came here, you know, came up the road there, traveled up the road to Texas A&I in Kingsville, where he needed one semester to finish his degree but ran out of, ran out of money. Unfortunately, in those years, there wasn't any Texas grants and opportunities of financial aid. However, he had a dream. He had a dream for his 10 children. And he and my mother sacrificed so much that nine of us graduated from a university here in South Texas. Nine of, out of, nine of us out of 10. And my younger sister still has that ticket to continue her education. I personally attended Texas Southmost College, A&I, where I had a golf scholarship, and eventually I'm a graduate of UT Pan American in 1972. Back then, there weren't many support systems for college students, as I mentioned, and even back then, though, with the few resources that we had, we knew the value of sacrificing for an education. I'm sure your parents like mine, want you to have a better life than they did. That's why they're here tonight, to celebrate with you. I certainly want that for my children and grandchildren. Education is the way to accomplish that better future and build character for yourselves. Martin Luther King once said that, and I quote him, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. I was reminded of his words when reading through the pages of your school's website. On your school's mission page, statement page, I found the following statement. We don't just educate, we build character. That's what this high school is all about. Students, it is time to put both your education and your character, your intellectual ability, and your capacity to act responsibly to the test. But before you do, I want to tell you something from the very bottom of my heart. Please do not give up hope. You give me hope, though, because you are living proof that people are more than the sums of their circumstances. Think about that. You're going to be parents, leaders, industry leaders, and advocates. Therefore, you have a major responsibility to be educated and prepare for the future. Don't be satisfied with people making decisions for you. The world needs you to be part of the process and be part of that success. And the best way to ensure that you can excel in life in the service of others in the community is to stand tall on a firm foundation of education. In closing, I want to say that you have begun to build that foundation. And I urge you to continue to build it step by step. Leaving high school is, of course, the end of an important chapter in your life. But today and tonight, 
as you graduate, you're beginning a new chapter in your life. With that in mind, I want you to enjoy your activity, but I also want you to understand that education is a lifetime experience. You learn something new every day of your life. And I want you to lead with your heart, not just your minds. We live in a world, unfortunately, that has been connected by the internet, but has produced a culture of hate. And I see so many hate messages in the internet, and I erase them right away. I do not forward anything that's negative. I want you to know that we, as we retire from what we do in life, will depend on your generation to bring about the peace in the world that we want as parents and as a society. Let's remember what Mother Teresa said years ago. She is my modern day saint favorite. She said, the reason that we're not at peace with one another is because we forget we belong to one another as human beings. And I can't help but think, as I was sitting there a while ago, I was thanking God, I was thanking your parents for being pro-life, for having you, for giving you an opportunity to grow, to be born, and to be part of this civilization. That is important, to respect one another, as Mother Teresa said, to understand, care, and help one another grow because we're just passing through. And we want to make it right for everyone around us in this world. You have an awesome power, the power to choose. That's a great power, the power to choose. <laughs> One of the greatest things an educator can give you is his or her education. All that information in that beautiful mind of our teachers and professors, when they share that with you, that is the greatest gift we can have for our young people. So continue to grow, continue to have the kind of heart that we need in this world to bring about not only peace in this country, but peace in the world. And as we look at the tens of thousands of people who are dying every day trying to get to America, let us understand and appreciate that we live in the greatest country in the world where we can have an assembly, when we can have a celebration, when we can share with one another what we must do to be able to continue to be the kind of men and women and children that our maker wanted us to be, loving, caring, and sharing with one another. May God bless you. Congratulations. Thank you.